Hi everybody. So, turns out I owe everybody a bit of an apology. Now in video 1748 we made this thing which is an Agrinsky wind turbine in a helix formation and I said well about the only way sensibly to do that is with 3D printing and I, that's right I, I absolutely believe that but the misinformation was this is an Agrinsky but it's an Agrinsky with a twist. The original Agrinsky actually was just a square box. Now it looked like this. That kind can be made pretty easily actually by hand with readily available materials. So please accept my apologies for um, that misinformation in this direction. Really didn't mean it. What I really meant was this helix type. But in order to make amends for that, what I'm going to do is make the normal type of a Grinsky and we'll have a look at that a little bit. Now, I could take those measurements, put them onto a bit of builder's board and cut out a template, but of course I do have the 3D printer. So I found this for a large scale a Grinsky and of course I immediately printed it. So you needed four of these, two like that, which go together like that, and in fact they're just the same thing but rotated around. They go like that. And then we need a mirror to go like that. So I printed four of these. Now that obviously is its own template. We could print that, glue it, draw around it, and we have a template already. And it's probably what I will do when I want to make more of these. But what we need to do obviously now is clean this up a bit and get it stuck together so we get our Agrinsky blades. Incidentally, it's printed from PLA. It's printed from PLA because Elegoo sent me a load of PLA. And people have been saying things like ABS would be better, and yes it would. And if you're going to cut it, then um, we would use something like Builder's Board, which is UPVC rated for 25 years. But PLA smooths out with ethyl acetate. Actually, you've got two choices, dichloromethane or ethyl acetate. Dichloromethane is a pretty lethal stuff. Ethyl acetate isn't much better, but it is UPVC cleaner, worth selling this, and they call it their Titan cleaner. And that's great, apparently, for smoothing out PLA. Anyway, let's glue those together. When we've glued and bolted them together, that's what we actually get. Now, it's got a flat side, so somewhat obviously, that would be a template for you. Just lie it on some piece of material. And if it were me and I weren't 3D printing them, and of course they take a while to 3D print, so if I make a wind ball out of this, I won't be 3D printing them. But if it was me, I would use my old favourite standby builder's board. UPVC foam cord, uh, foam filled, face your own soffit. Guaranteed up to 25 years. I'd just pop one of those on, draw around it, cut it out and keep on going until I had the number that I wanted. Now obviously, the way they go is that one is like that and the other, which has been the mirror, is going to go like that. And there's something missing in between. That something missing is a bit of infill. The infill could be like just such a huge range of things. For instance, sheet aluminium would do really, really well, say about 0 0.3, 0 0.2 of a mil, something like that. A bit like tissue paper, folds really nicely, but still keeps its shape. Clearly, sheet plastic would do really well, and you can get a whole range of plastics in this sheet form that you can bend around there. Now, I've got a bunch of this stuff. This is 0.2 mil, 3 or 6 stainless steel. I have it kicking around for, uh, oh, something else. I actually forget what. But it's 30 centimetres across, which is a nice height for this. This is 41.7 centimetres around that curb. So what I need to do is cut them off and put a bit of bend in the curb so that we can fit it easily around that shape. Do that a few times, we get this nice S-curve. Okay, to help me put this on, I'm using a bit of double-sided foam tape. Peel off the backing and stick it in there. So the tape's only any good for holding it in place while you do the next bit, and that is drill it out and put some bolts in there. I'm using M4s. Okay, that's it all put together. Now I've made it out of stainless steel, so it's nice and shiny, and traditionally, you put it that way. But I want to give that rooftop one a go, you know, the apex of the roof where the roof is supposed to divert the wind and that means putting it that way. So I'm going to knock up a quick cradle in that orientation and we'll see what happens. Okay, it's just a U of plastic, this will clear and all we do is feed the axle through. Okay, there you go. Certainly spins freely. Let's see if we can find a bit of wind for it.
<laughs> yeah, that's kind of cool. It's about 0.8 meters per second, going up to about 1.3 meters per second. And sure, I haven't put a generator on it, but I'm actually kind of surprised it can move its own weight. So it's it's doing okay at this stage. That's nice. Okay, that was kind of cool. I mean, for all those who say, hey, give me some figures, I can't make an assessment without figures. There's plenty of figures out there for the performance of an Ogrinsky turbine if you bother to look further than a video showing you how to make one. The point of this video was to show you that the Ogrinsky doesn't need to be 3D printed when it's in this format. I meant the twisted version and I apologize for that. And of course, the other point is, it works really well, really nicely in this horizontal position, so we're thinking above motorways, we're thinking about putting it along the roof line for diverted wind, that kind of thing. Now, of course, we're going to slap some stuff on that to get it to generate and see how it actually generates, but that'll be up and coming. This one is literally just to show you, you can make this thing without a 3D printer, and I'm sorry if I'd led you to believe otherwise. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And please do remember to like and subscribe.